everyone, it's Tommy from TechNexus and welcome to a new week. So I think at the end of last week I spoke about probably jumping into some other 3D tools but uh, I was with a client all week and we covered a lot of plant and Navis works and we did touch a bit on advanced steel but it just reminded me of, of utilizing advanced steel with Navis works. So I just wanted to, to spend this week uh, looking at advanced steel, but also looking at advanced steel inside Navisworks itself. So if you're familiar with the interface, here's uh, advanced steel. Um, there's nothing special about uh, sort of today's video just going from uh, advanced steel to Navisworks, but there are two paths for this. The first part, path, is just using the AutoCAD file itself. So um, <clears throat> it will it will come into Navisworks directly, but for whatever reason, uh, and I don't know the, the the history of it or the reasoning, is that the native Advanced Steel file coming into Navisworks doesn't bring all the properties. Now I guess that it, it could be to do with um, that they're uh, that they're proxy objects. Um, it could be just maybe the maintaining the data. I don't exactly know why, but for whatever reason, when you do bring it in, it all comes in fine. We get all the joint boxes, we get all the members and everything. But as soon as we click on something, we don't get um, really anything. Of value out of this so in you know in here it, it does say that it's on a layer beams uh, this entity handle the timeliner and AutoCAD doesn't really show us anything at all so if you're watching this and you and you want to bring in your advanced steel to, to Navisworks your best bet to get all the, the, the data and info is I, I wouldn't just I wouldn't lean on automatically assuming that IFC is going to do anything and everything for you there's a button here in advanced steel under the export and import tab called export to Navisworks. So what that does is make it'll make a DWIF file, a DWF, <clears throat> and then it will open up uh, Navisworks and load that file in there. Okay, so once once that is loaded in there, then we start to see a lot more of the properties. And I'll just let that finish loading. And we can see here we've got the the approval tab, the Canva property, fab data, generic properties, geometry, the material, any notes, part numbers. So this will be handy for when we do animation and um, the QTO part of things. The section name itself. The, any user attributes, so if you've got 10 user attributes in there, okay, so it is it is a lot more data rich if you are just going straight from advanced steel using uh, the export to Navisworks button. So if we go back to the AutoCAD one, you can see we do have, I guess, the properties of each one, sort of knowing what it is, but we can't sort of really drill into what it actually is. So again, this is the reasoning for using a DWIF file. So if you are working with a steel detailer and uh, they, they have this file already, maybe they don't want to give you the DWG file, you can ask them for the DWIF. Uh, and again, it will be more data rich for you. So then that way you could utilize the, the quantification side of Navisworks to uh, get, some, uh, get some quantities out. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Uh, that's the the video for today. So tomorrow we'll delve a little bit more on um, Advanced Steel here inside Navisworks. So we'll do a quick clash. We'll do a timeliner. We'll do some quantities um, and maybe just do some markups. But we're really just going to have a play with Advanced Steel and Navisworks for this week. So thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Thumbs up if you did like it thumbs down if you didn't 
uh, click on the bell icon to get all of my daily notifications of all of my videos and I will see you tomorrow for some more advanced steel and navisworks.